Hi, um, this is Jamie Raditz, and I wanted to show you that brief little um, video that I made in regards to our topic this week for reality therapy and REBT therapy. Um, I learned a lot from reading from Marcus's um, case plan study as well as um, reading about the therapies. And I just had some things that I wanted to discuss with you guys. Um, for First off, um, I believe that the reality therapy that was being used with Marcus um, did sh show signs of um, partnership with the uh, counselor as well as um, mutual understanding of the situations. The counselor was very um, communicative about his role and um, the roles of respect and communication, creating that safe space for the, for uh, Marcus to discuss his concerns. Right from the gate, he came in saying he didn't know why he was there and telling his feelings and trying to work through those. And then um, the, the counselor did not establish that if he says anything that deems it may be harmful to himself or others that he would need to report that. But that's definitely something that we should um, consider not violating confidentiality according to our um, ACA code of ethics, but also letting someone know that we need to um, have our clients not harm themselves if they're feeling um, any deep depression or other signs of um, self-harm, which Marcus was not. But um, just to establish that in the beginning, and if they say anything that leads you to believe that they're going to hurt themselves or others, then um, it's definitely something that needs to be reported um, to get them help. Um, I wanted to say on here that the counselor did show empathy to Marcus's situation, understanding that his partner had left for work and um, he was feeling um, abandoned and um, not the priority in the relationship, although he had other things that he was um, trying to accomplish himself, he allowed the external um, circumstances dictate his feelings and behaviors um, instead of um, coming from within. Um, also, in this situation, um, the choices that he was making were not benefiting his goals of achieving uh, the papers that were needed for his PhD comps. Um, so therefore, his goals would not be have reached if he was not going to change those behaviors internally. Um, and this will help him with various aspects in his life, continuing to make proper choices to reach the goals that he sets for himself, both short term and long term. And these plans that he's making, these goals he's setting, he can adjust them as he goes. He does not need to um, think that they are set in stone or they have to be exactly as set out and no changes can be made to the goals or the plan um, and constantly monitoring if he's achieving that or if he needs to make adjustments uh, either in his schedule um, and accomplishing that with the help of a counselor can be very very beneficial um, this also by making plans and goals does hold everyone accountable um, if the counselor is holding the client accountable like Marcus to do the homework that he set. Um, the homework allows him to make, be aware of certain behaviors and things that he may be exhibiting. Um, and also, excuse me, and also to create a realistic plan that he can achieve and feel successful at um, and build upon that. Um, once he has the basics um, down, he can therefore challenge himself even more in the future um, to accomplish other things because a PhD is a pretty uh, decent uh, goal to set if you are ready to achieve that. Um, as far as the other question regarding um, the techniques, um, I feel that you definitely be um, open to trying out different forms of talk therapy as well as um, possibly uh, explaining more about um, the feelings behind uh, his reasons for the goals that he's setting 
Um, those types of things that come to mind when trying to um, implement something that's a realistic goal and a realistic plan um, to achieve. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, catching my thoughts. Um, Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Anyway, <laughs> um, 